So let's try an example problem, just using these two equations. Suppose I'm standing up here on a ledge. And the ground is down below. This height would be one meter. And if I just let the ball go, it's going to fall, of course. And I could ask how long until it hits the ground. Well, the thing I have to remember is my expression for position as a function of time. which looks like this. I have to start putting in some of these initial conditions, which I haven't said yet. At time t equals zero, I'm letting the ball go from up here. So at time t equals zero, that value of y naught should equal h. That's the height, that one meter that I'm going to drop it from. If I just let the ball go and I don't throw it down, then the initial speed is zero. So this term is zero. And the acceleration here is minus g. Now I have to put in some other intuition. The ball hits the ground. Then y of t equals zero. I don't necessarily know when that time is, but I know at that time this function of y should return to zero. So I'm going to put in that that's equal to h minus one half g t squared. If I move this term over to the left side, I have one half g t squared is h, and I wanted to solve for the time. How much time does this take? So I'm going to multiply by 2 and divide by g and take a square root. We can try putting in our numbers. This is 2 times 1 meter over 9.8 meters per second squared. Still have to take the square root. It's worth doing a unit check right now just to make sure that I haven't made a silly mistake. I have meters here which will cancel meters in the denominator. And I have seconds squared in the denominator of the denominator, so this will flip and it'll become seconds squared in the numerator. But I'll take the square root, so this will only be in seconds. So this value if I punch this into my calculator works out to be 0.452 seconds. Now, there's none of these equations that I want you to memorize. This is not necessarily the most important equation to memorize, or this is not. The most important equation to know all the time is this one, the one we started with, because it's one of two equations that we derived at the very beginning of this, and it will get us anywhere we need to go. The only things I had to really learn to do here were to insert some intuition around what are these initial conditions and what are the conditions of the situation when I, when I want to know something? So I wanted to know the time when the ball hits the ground, and I had to know that's zero right there, because that's where the ground is in this coordinate system. So it's like there's a Y coordinate system that goes up the side like that. I could also ask you. how fast it will be going. Because it's not going to just gently glide to the ground, it's going to be moving pretty fast at the time it hits the ground. And I, I get to ask you what that is. So I could remind us that V 
this expression v naught plus a t is what the velocity as a function of time is. Again, this v naught is zero. And so this will equal minus g times the time. And we're going to insert that particular time right there, because although this is true for any time, we want to know the particular time when it's just about to hit the ground. After it's the ground, of course, it's stopped. And we don't, um, we know that it's going to be zero speed, but I want to know just about the time when it's about to hit the ground. So I'm going to insert 0.452 seconds here. I'm going to use 9.8 meters there. And I find that this is minus 4.4 meters per second. So it's actually moving pretty fast. Notice that check my units again. This is meters per second squared. I multiply by one times seconds, and that becomes meters per second. There's an interesting thing about this, which is that I do these calculations, and it doesn't matter whether I'm talking about a ball or a turkey or a feather or whatever. It all comes out the same. If I drop something one meter off the surface of the Earth, it's going to drop in about 0.452 seconds, and it's going to impact the ground with about 4.4 meters per second. And that's true what, no matter what mass the object is. That can be kind of counterintuitive for us. And in fact, this was a key, one of the key discoveries from Galileo to, to empirically show this. He did it by dropping uh, objects off of a tall building. But in fact, um, more modern experiments would replicate the same thing. Sometimes our intuition about this is not very good because there's air around us. And for some light objects, the air resistance can be larger than the, for other objects. And we get a false sense that actually the time to drop to the ground actually depends on how heavy something is. And in fact, that's not the case. All objects fall at the same acceleration, and all objects, therefore, would reach the ground at the same time. And one of the most interesting demonstrations of this and that air resistance is in fact the, the problem was done by astronauts who went to the moon.